Hi folks, it's Frank again. Sorry we were interrupted in the video. I want to continue now. So I was telling you about the 30% raise that Stelmac gave to all cabinet ministers. Now at the time cabinet ministers were making were making here. I got it right here. At Stelmac. Farmer, occupation, farmer, ability. So at the time that he gave himself a raise, he was already making a hundred and... <clears throat> he as the premier was already making a hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Gave himself a raise too, up to two hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred and thirty dollars. So he went from, he went from three times in one jump, he went from three times to four times the average wage. He got all your wages in one raise. That should be criminal right there. 30% raise. 30% raise is all your wages. In one raise. Now, so, he was elected by the population in February 2008. Now, I believe that the raises came after he was elected. I can't remember the order that these came in, but anyway, the raises came after he was elected. Because he might not have got elected if he gave himself that raise beforehand. And what, oh, he did one other thing. But that didn't happen until after he was elected by the population. So this is the other thing he did. Now he had help in doing it. On April 22nd of 2008. So here's a fact that he gave himself a raise either before or after he was elected by the population when he was premier appointed by the Progressive Conservative Association of Alberta. In 2008, Iris Evans, blast from the past, that name, eh, folks? Long time, old time, progressive conservative. But she was still there, and she was minister of something or other or other, such and such. And Iris Evans announced that starting next year, in 2009, the government would not collect would not collect our money and put it in the purse. No. They were eliminated. Eliminate. Announces on April 22nd. April 22nd of 2008. Iris Evans announces the elimination of the collection of your money that's supposed to go into your purse. She says, we're not going to collect your money on the Alberta health care premium tax. In fact, the system doesn't exist anymore. And sure enough, in 2009, the Alberta health care premium tax system was gone. Gone. Something that we needed in 1969, 70, 71, all the way through to 2008. We needed it every single year. And all of a sudden, we don't need it anymore. We're richer than we think. What, did the Sultan of Brunei send us a bunch of money? No. They gained it 30 years ago and they had to get it back to where it was. The whole same organization holding up different premiers, the same organization ruling over us for 40 years, building up their fortunes and their wealth and their friends' fortunes and wealth, all the friends of the Tories, all the poopah masters. In 2009, the Alberta health care premium tax died. And that put a $1.2 billion hole in our budget. 
2009, 1.2 billion. 1.2 billion, 1.2 billion every year until we were 7.2 billion in the hole. $7.2 billion in the hole. And that is just from eliminating the premiums. But whoa, wait on a minute. And now I'm going over the stuff I did in my first videos a little bit. Because I was mentally ill. I was fighting through mental illness to bring this to you. But I'm not. Today I am less mentally ill than I was yesterday. And yesterday I was less mentally ill than I was the day before. And by the end of these videos, I will be, I will have no sign of mental illness. Hopefully. So, we're $7.2 billion down. But hey, 550,000 people moved to Alberta between the time they wiped out the system and the time <coughs> Mr. Prentice tried to resurrect or to bring in a new Alberta health care premium system. No, they were just bringing back the old one at the levels it should have been at had they not played with it 30 years before. <clears throat> so, so this was the actual loss, but you have to add in the loss premiums from the people who moved here because if they hadn't wiped out the system, most of those people would have had to pay premiums. <clears throat> and then, because we're in the negative, as reported by Derek Fildebrand, then of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, and now in opposition with the Wild Rose Party. Derek Fildebrand reported in 2009 that we were actually $2.8 billion in the hole. Well, Derek, you were probably right. I took your number, and it looks like you were almost bang on the money there, Derek. Now, <clears throat> when you apply the loss of premiums, add those into the 7.2 billion, and you apply a negative interest, apply to that. <clears throat> because all that was borrowed money. We're not paying off our debt, so the so so we're not paying our premiums, so the debt. The loss from that is building up and we owe interest on it. I hear we're paying over a billion or a billion and a half dollars in interest again every year just on our debt. Thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> so anyway, right here, when the election was called by Mr. Prentice, we were $7.2 billion in the hole. We weren't collecting Alberta health care premiums from anybody and we were going down at the rate of $1.2 billion plus the loss of the premiums from people who were moving here plus the negative interest. And that caused a total deficit of $7.8 billion. In fact, it cost $8.04 billion. Whoa, wait, hang on a sec. That's it. That's from 2008 to here. I started it at zero, but we already had a loss. Because in 2003, they said starting in 2004, no, no seniors would pay the thing. So we already had a loss. Now, I've estimated it conservatively because I don't want to, I don't want anybody to say, oh, you're just making a mountain out of a molehill. No, I don't have to make a mountain. It's already a mountain. <clears throat> we. I can serve the estimate at 150 million a year, but it could be as high as, this is only a four year period, it could be as high as $2.8 billion loss in those four years. I don't know, I don't have the government figure. Do you? No. They may not be available. They may have been shredded in the 11 days after Rachel Motley won the election. Oh. So Ed Stelmack did what he had to do, and then he exited. Ed Stelmack exited. He did a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, yeah. But he exited. And 
when he exited, they had another leadership race in the Progressive Conservative Association of Alberta family.